A wise woman once said, bigger is better and better is bigger. A little bit is never enough. So I bought 360 yards of tulle and I squeezed all of it into one dress. Why? There's a long answer, which is mostly a soliloquy on the importance of building absolutely fireproof joy in the middle of this dumpster fire of a year. But the short answer is I felt like it and it turns out that no one can stop me. Being an adult is fun. To start, I needed a base dress. I thought about buying it and saving myself some time, but not until after I had already ordered eight yards of this pale purple fabric. So I had to make it. Returning things is too hard and totally against the rules when I bought it like a year ago. I used a familiar pattern, but added about 30 inches to the bottom because I didn't think I could put 300 yards of tulle on a short dress. And again, challenge accepted? No, no, not this time. Then I took all the fabric I had left and cut it into 21 triangles of random yet specific sizes, which then became these seven, Pieces? I want to call them triangles still because they're pointy and I don't know what you call a big triangle sandwiched between two little triangles. It's like a spaceship or a fighter jet or a gramophone. But I sewed up all seven of those wonky triangles? Yes, that's what we're calling them. My cat made sure I wouldn't lose any of them. But then I did have to make him give up his sleeping spot the only way I knew how, by offering him a better one. I pinned each of the wonky triangles between the long pattern pieces of the dress, woke Mr. Meowth up a few more times, and sewed them all together. Without the wonky triangles, the dress would have looked something like this, which is fine. But with them, like three times as much swoosh and three times as much space for tulle. I sewed all the front pieces together and the back left and the back right pieces together. And then since the dress was in two halves-ish, I thought I should make the sleeves match. So I cut them right in half too, because no one could stop me. I pinned the sleeve backs to the back of the dress and the sleeve fronts to the front and sewed them on. I know I said I cut all my remaining fabric into triangles and I didn't lie, but it's one of those philosophical truths that there will always be scraps, usually the kind that seem useless but end up being the perfect size in some bizarre turn of events. That's why we all hoard scraps like gold. I managed to eke out a ton of long squiggly pieces. I cut them into even little snaky doodles, then folded them into quarters, pinned them, and sewed them down both sides. I ended up needing about 300 inches of these squiggles. This whole project just sounds like I'm exaggerating, which is so awesome. But it did take a while. Once I had enough, I cut the entire squiggly pile into five inch pieces. And, and then, then I just sewed them into the sleeve, like this. I may have skipped a couple steps for absolutely no reason. So uh, here's a totally accurate reenactment. Anyway, once the whole dress was connected with the teeny tiny, totally not frustrating, crisscrossy pieces, I just needed to finish making everything dress shaped. You know, pin up the sides, sew them together, add a zipper to the back, do a little hand sewing to hem the neck and the sleeves, and oh, yeah, I should probably close up the back seam under the zipper too. But he just looks so comfy. I wanted to make the hem a little stiffer than usual, so I bought six yards of horsehair braid and six yards of thinner horsehair braid, and I wasn't sure which one I was going to use, like which was going to be the right amount of springiness, which is why I got both. It's really good I had both because, um, I accidentally made this hem 12 yards around. Be warned, somehow that's just what happens when you don't bother to measure anything, but cut out the biggest pieces you can manage. I mean, I just kept telling myself that bigger is better, even if it does take an hour to sew. And I wasn't wrong. I'll admit it, I considered stopping right here. I tried it on, I spun, I fell in love, but there isn't even an ounce of tool on this thing, so onwards! I thought at this point that a plan might be helpful. I spent an hour using Photoshop to do math and came up with this. I never looked at this again, so don't expect it to look like this. 
For my next trick, I'm going to turn this tape into a ruler. If I define ruler as an item which both helps me cut straight lines and measure distances, which is close to what's in the dictionary. I simply stretched two pieces of tape across my desk, laid the tool on top, held it steady with two of the heaviest and juiciest books on my shelf, and cut the first of many, 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 many pieces. Many, many. Like, think of a number, and is this your number? If it's not, yours was too low, I'm assuming. And this is just half the stack I used on the first tier. If you're wondering how I kept myself from spiraling in the munificent monotony of cutting hundreds of straight lines, I recommend rewatching an old love TV show, something you've seen many times but never gotten tired of, with about eight seasons? Because that's how long all this took me. Also, when I got bored, I started stacking the tool into layers of three, cranked the tension on my sewing machine all the way up, and gathered each stack of tool into a pretty little ruffle. They started out about 60 inches long and ended up five. Because tool is magic. You know, the good kind, like dragons and sorcery and always summer and ever winter. Then I sewed each little ruffle to a ribbon, making one big ruffle. You could say huge, gargantuan, ginormous, approximately one-eighth the size of a football field. I've never gotten to use football fields as a measurement in a sewing project before, but I could get used to it. I pinned this colossal ruffle to the bottom of my dress. I love that you can see exactly how many pins I thought I was going to use because I brought down not one, not two, but three boxes of pins. That's not overkill at all. And that wasn't sarcasm. I also think that this bit in particular was Mr. Meowth's favorite part because there was all this comfy fabric on the floor, which he loves, and it stayed there for an hour or two while I stuck every pin I owned into it, and I only once or twice politely asked him to move, so this was a peak napping opportunity. Once all my pins were in the ruffle, it was time to take them all back out, while slowly and steadily feeding it through my sewing machine. Since I started from the bottom, this was the longest ruffle I would have to sew, and there was literally nowhere to go but up. But the bad news was that this was also the easiest ruffle to sew because every inch of ruffle I added from here on out was just making the dress bigger and obviously better, but also heavier and exponentially more difficult to convince to cooperate with my sewing machine. At some point, negotiations kind of failed, and by the end, it was just brute force, hanging on for dear life, and you'll see. If you thought that was fun, great, it's time to do it again. And again, and again, and again. But let's do it a little faster this time. I cut, I gathered, I sewed, I paused for some shenanigans, I pinned, I began to feel the struggle of coaxing it into my machine, and I sewed. When I got bored again, somewhere around knee height, I added some purple into the layers. Mostly because I ran out of white tulle, but it seemed like time. I pinned it all in, watching the ruffles creep ever closer, wheedled and cajoled it into my machine with the gentle hindrance of my assistant, and sewed it down. I tried it on again, just to double check a few important things, like walking, and turning, and how heavy the skirt was with 150 yards of tool attached. 150. I cut, I gathered, sui, confixi, veni, vidi, linki. Did you know that cats are to tool as vampires are to thresholds? Apparently, both require invitations. They also both have fangs, are absolutely irresistible in a ruffled cravat, and invade your space and ruin your life in the best and worst ways. You just want to be involved in everything that I do, which is how I know you're the best cat in the world. Very sorry to every other cat. But you can't sit there. <laughs> I just, I need to get to exactly where your butt is. A little elbow grease and I got it into my sewing machine again and sewed it all down. I thought by this point that it would take me less than an hour to sew each round, and it does. But not by as much as you would think. We can say it together now, right? I cut, I gathered, I sewed, I pinned, I sewed. Excellent. Then let's just have a little chat. I've been thinking a lot about the phrase, enough is enough. Partly because it's delightfully redundant and should be as eye-rollingly obvious as saying this cat is a cat. But it's not, and everyone understands that. Like at best, it means I'm satisfied. And at worst, it means congratulations, you brave explorer of the unknown you. You've found the absolute limit. Which is cool, to me. The phrase also just sort of amused me when I tried to think about it mathematically, digging up some dusty old algebra from whatever back corner I stored that in. Like, enough is enough. Enough equals enough. Subtract enough from both sides, solve for meaning, and equals is okay. Math and language are different. Except math is a language, so. But mostly I was thinking about it because I didn't think about it through any of this. Part of me feels like I should have because this dress is in the dictionary next to the word extra, which by definition is way more than enough. Like this dress was already standing up by itself halfway through. And it was a literal battle every time I tried to sew a new layer on because it wanted to drag my whole sewing machine away with it, across the table, over the edge, onto the floor, out the door, just like a poor meatball. So big. 
but making this was fun. I know I told at least six people that I would never do it again, but not because of the work, which was absurdly repetitive, perfectly calming, and utterly delicious to watch come together. No, no. I just don't like repeating magic tricks, and I'd rather do some other weird and wonderful thing than come back to this particular wildness. Even if I am really excited both to have done it and now to keep it in my closet forever. The very last tier was the only one that actually got annoyingly difficult. I had to cut the tool in small enough pieces that I couldn't keep using the books or the dragon eggs, but had to just hold it down with one hand. Thankfully, sewing the gathered stacks to the ribbon was the easiest because there were only a few pieces, but then the waist shape made it impossible to lay it all flat, so I had to pin it mm, sideways? then wrestled into my sewing machine stitch an inch at a time and turn what felt like the entire solar system in order to feed the next inch under the needle. And did all of that somehow make me feel even more like a mischievous goblin princess for pulling it off? Maybe. All I know for sure is that a little bit is never enough. I want it all. but this works. Thank you for coming along on this entire adventure with me. It was a lot. If you enjoyed it, you can like, comment, or even subscribe to see what I'm going to do next. Speaking of, it's been brought to my attention that my channel is called Gwen Pink, but I haven't made anything pink. Let's fix that.